Hey, singers, voice teachers, and music lovers. Here we are in Nashville, Tennessee with the great David Phelps. My all-time favorite singer is going to share his vocal wisdom and tips with us. The first question I always ask singers when they come to a lesson with me is, tell me about your vocal journey. How'd you get started? Well, for me, I was, I was born into a singing family, you know, a very musical family. And so music was always around us. And um, it was just something that we did. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, my oldest sister, used to sing with me uh, before she passed away. And then I have another sister that is a professional trumpet player in uh, Chicago now and um, my mom has a great kind of classical soprano voice and uh, dad sang with us because he had to so uh, <laughs> but uh, you know we would just always you know make music yeah. and so um, for me that was always just a natural thing it wasn't something that began at some point about early teen years um, it became kind of not cool to be a singer, you know, with all of, my, all of the guys at school. And yeah. I was playing football, and so huh. I just didn't, I kind of stopped singing just a little bit, or just slowed down. Mm. And then the best thing that happened to me was the whole football team joined the choir. Oh. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I was one of them, and, mm. and after a year, they all quit, but I, I stuck around and wow. um, uh, kind of dove into that again because I, I quickly found that I had a talent that um, not a lot of people had. Yeah. And I, I won't forget uh, in ninth grade mm. when everybody had joined the, the choir, um, there was a talent show that year and I entered it. And it was a little town in Texas mm. and so when the school put on something, everybody came to it. You yeah. know, it wasn't like, you know, a little bitty... Yeah. Production, so um, that was just for the school, but you know, it was a town wide thing. Sure, so I sang and they gave me a standing ovation that night. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got in the car with uh, my dad afterward, my CPA dad, yeah, and said, Okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I could, <laughs> I could feel him tremble, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, but uh. He was like, you know, you can get a degree in accounting and then, you know, you sing on the side. Yeah. But then, you know, he and my mom were the people that drove me everywhere to sing wherever I, mm -hmm. wherever the opportunities started uh, coming along. And from that point, uh, for me, it was, you know, my interest peaked. I was like, wow, I can get a response from people like mm -hmm. this, you know. And so uh, I started singing in church a whole lot more again and. My pathway was littered with people who became so important on my journey. I went singing to the church in, uh, in Houston, and the pastor afterwards came up and said, sing everywhere you can. Wow. And that's still, when people ask me, what's the best advice? And that's it. It's so mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. Sing everywhere you can. It, it accomplishes so much. Mm -hmm. Vocally, communication-wise, um, having to having to um, you know talk to people about what you want to do and yeah. uh, you know I, I I would say hey you know did, if you like to eat do you have any other people that you know you mm -hmm. might talk to colleagues at different places that yeah. uh, would let me come sing and so uh, it really for me it was um, an asserted effort to try to have more opportunities yeah. uh, to get in front of people 
and sing. And that was um, that was a, a great uh, piece of advice. It, yeah. was, it was wonderful. At the same time, my high school choir director was an amazing classical team mm. and uh, just phenomenal. And um, he saw that I had talent and really started trying to, you know, foster that in me. And then my my music minister at my church mm. was, had come from the commercial side of music, mm. touring and um, in uh, contemporary uh, Christian music. Yeah. And so he really spoke into me on that side of things. Mm. Um, and, and I uh, began taking voice lessons mm. from uh, college instructors that uh, I was so fortunate to be able to... Uh, to begin to learn with. So I had these people that were really speaking in to yeah. um, my, my process. My minister, my minister of music at my church, he introduced me to, a, there was a contest before American Idol was American Idol, you know, mm -hmm. was around. It was at, uh, in Colorado uh, during the summer and he was like, you gotta go and do this. And so I was like, all right, that's it. So at the beginning of the summer, when the summer hit, until the time I left, I would go up to the church, and he would say, sing what song? And, and I would sing it for him, and, and he would, sometimes he would stop in the middle of the song and go, that's, you don't need to do that, you know? Hmm. And he would just coach me through this stuff. And then maybe one day he would be like, so you've got to say something before you sing, write it down. And so I'd sit down and write it down. He'd come and crumple it up, throw it away. That was awful. Start again, you know. So I had this person who was no holds barred, just yeah. like, you know, speaking into me, going, you can't have an ego about this. If yeah. you want to get better, you've got to. You've got to accept instruction. So, so these, it was, it's amazing looking back at the, the people um, that uh, really, really spoke into my journey hmm. early on. My parents are, are uh, educators. Yeah. My dad was a CPA and then became an instructor at University of Houston, and my mom has a PhD in English. And so they were like, well, if this is what you're going to do, then um, you're going to go to school and do it. So yeah. I went to Baylor University and um, had an amazing teacher there mm. that just believed in me so much. We fought a lot, actually, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, she just, she, she really wanted me to go into classical music, believed in my talent so much, didn't, didn't unappreciate what I was doing, but really wanted to, to see me do that. And then at one point in my junior year, she sat down with me and said, do you feel called to sing gospel music? And I was like, I think I really do. And she was like, all right. She was like, I, I can't battle that, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so uh, she said, let's make you the best that there is. And I was like, all right, let's go, you know. That's great. And uh, it was, uh, she, boy, she was just amazing, an, an amazing gift. Really just uh, taught me so much about my uh, vocal instrument. And at the same, same time, loved that I was a student of yeah, you know, I would be like, well, "What's happening when I do that?" Tell me. <laughs> Not just, you know, what do I need to think about? I would be like, "What's happening to my vocal cords when this is happening?" You know, when I got to college, um, I began singing. I, I, what what had started as a high school student, I began singing on the weekends when I went to school. I would go wherever someone would hear me sing. Yeah. My friends joined fraternities and you know sororities and all that kind of stuff, and I went out and I sang mm -hmm. on the weekends and mm -hmm. did concerts and just kept building my network yeah. and uh, just tried to sing and and learn from that as much as possible. Yeah. By the time I graduated from college, uh, I just had this really big network yeah. that, um, that I could call on people and say, "Hey, I'm well, going on this weekend," you know. Can right. we, and so that's how it really, you know, started for me to be able to do what I'm doing. And it's different than it is now because, um, I mean, I was in a world where people didn't think about music necessarily as a career. Mm. There were, you know, of course, huge music, you know, stars yeah. back then. But to be, you know, my, my parents were, they, they didn't have a wherewithal how to make that happen. Yeah. Just, oh. 
All right, well, what's the next thing we do? Let's see if he can, we'll take him to sing wherever he, you know, can do. So it was a, it was definitely an unpaved path, mm -hmm. you know. So all we knew was to do was just do the next do thing, more. you know, yeah. and do more. Yeah, right. So, yeah, that's kind of how everything began. That's amazing. And it's an amazing encouragement, actually, for me and other voice teachers to know how many people you had speaking into your journey as as educators you know and, and absolutely i i know myself i couldn't be a successful teacher if i hadn't had great teachers and so it's really cool to hear how many people were a part of paving your path yeah i mean i i just wouldn't be doing what i'm doing still today yeah. so so i'm 51 and i i think about you know times that uh I have been on the vocal edge, you know? Yeah. And had I not had the training and the people speaking to my life, I still wouldn't, I would not be doing what I'm doing yeah. today. I yeah. would have lost, you know, lost it by now. Um, undoubt, I mean, I'm, I'm without a doubt uh, that that would be the case. So I'm extremely grateful to uh, the people in my life who just fed into uh, this dream that I have. Yeah.